Kyle Krabs and Joe Marino here with FanRag Sports. We are summarizing the South practice here in Mobile, Alabama. Day two. Joe, another opportunity to assess some talent. Who stood out to you today in the afternoon? Now, first guy I want to mention here is North Carolina State running back Matt Days. Thought he had a really nice day. Uh, in this type of environment, you're not going to get to see uh, running backs run over, over players, but what he did, he looked smooth. He looked quick getting up the field. I like what I saw most as a pass catcher. Really nice hands, ran good routes, and I think that could be his calling card at the next level as a receiving threat out of the backfield. Yeah, you and I are in sync with our transitions today because I want to talk about a pass catcher. Clemson's Artavis Scott. I was really impressed with how fluid he was throughout his routes. His ability to pluck the ball almost made a number of really impressive receptions out away from his body with defenders you know, closely playing off his hip shoulder. But uh, even when he was running routes and re required some steep breaks back to the line of scrimmage or to the boundary, he was able to snap those off with a good amount of quickness. So uh, Scott was a player in a group of wide receivers that is filled with really crisp breaks and, and quickness, uh, stood a, a shoulder above everybody else today. Next guy for me is LSU center Ethan Pokic. Uh, this is not a, a, a nice stage for these interior offensive linemen where they're in these one-on-ones, there's no structure to the scheme, it, they're literally just in an island. That's not where interior offensive linemen operate. But I thought he did a really nice job working his anchor, using his length, he's six foot seven, getting his arms on top of these powerful defensive linemen and keeping a, you know, a, a modest depth of the pocket set. So uh, in a tough environment, Pokets really stood out on the interior offensive line. Yeah. Uh, someone else who stood out to me was a Mississippi tight end slash wide receiver slash big slot, however you want to classify him, Evan Ingram. Uh, this is a really athletic group with O.J. Howard and Gerald Everett as well as Ingram, but in the opportunities in which Ingram was running routes vertically down the field, whether it was against air or in one-on-ones against defenders, he moved at a pace on his own. He was a different speed than both of those other two tight ends, and this is a really impressive group altogether. So for him to be able to really stand out in that regard uh, gives him a, a leg up and, and was very impressive in my opinion today. I've got one more standout, and that is going to be UCLA defensive tackle Eddie Vanderdose. I've really liked what I've seen from him both practices so far this week. This is kind of a tailor-made event for, for him to showcase what he does well, which is get off the ball, fire into offensive linemen with good hand technique and leverage, and just use his natural power to, to create push and, and disengage with, with good hand technique. So he's really dominating the one-on-one -on -one sessions, and he's just a wrecking ball in the interior whose motor runs as hot as any... Uh, any player out here. Yeah. Alex Anzalone's the last player, again, that, that stood out to me. He was a, one of my notable players from yesterday as well. Anzalone is really smooth. Uh, he's effective in space. He was able to run stride for stride with Danelle Pumphrey on one rep down the field. So uh, I think that speaks good volumes to the movement skills that Anzalone brings to the table. Uh, very quick and instinctive being able to get down into the point of attack and find the ball locating uh, through traffic very well. So Anzalone, uh, two days in a row, has been a very impressive talent for me here in Mobile. Yeah, good tip on him entering this week. I know you've talked highly of him, and he's really showing up. Uh, we hate to do it, but we got to do it, right? Uh, who who didn't impress today? And, and that, for me, is Kansas State defensive end Jordan Willis. Uh, came in here with, with a lot of production right in the Big 12, a couple of really nice seasons back-to-back. -back. But when you start translating what he does and how he won in college to the next level, it, it's, it's a little underwhelming, particularly today in the one-on-ones. You didn't see a whole lot of uh, get-off, a lot of burst and twitch, uh, really stiff when trying to work work the corner and get the edge track on these offensive tackles and we kind of talk about how underwhelming this offensive tackle class is particularly the players that are here they're having uh, an easy time sliding their feet and keeping up with Willis which is very concerning for a highly productive player from the Big 12. Yeah, and the one that concerned me today uh, that I was hoping to see some more of was on the other side of the line of scrimmage and that was Miami offensive lineman Danny Isadora. Isadora was a player that impressed me throughout the course of his film studies and had a pretty respectable day yesterday. Today was just much more up and down. Uh, some of the pass rush one-on-ones that took place down here in the end zone uh, really struggled with the power and, and defenders really had a success keeping him off base. Uh, so I'd like to see him kind of get back on track and stay patient in his pass set, uh, keep his weight back on his heels and balanced and, and prevent himself from getting either bowled backwards or thrown off his set. Kyle Krabs with Joe Marino. We are FanRag Sports and we will be back tomorrow for a day three recap.